Kebabs and charcoal are one of the best flavour duos in the world. Add colourful dips and salad and you're in heaven. Welcome to the delicious world of Turkish food, a cuisine full of hidden delights. Join our food safari to learn how to make classic lamb kefta with a master chef. Delicious golden burgle, dips across the colour spectrum, traditional stuffed veggies and a dessert fit for sultans. Turkey is a cross-cultural place for centuries. We are the bridge between Europe and Asia, and you have the influence of the, the East and the West, and from the, even the Middle East, from the Northern North Africa. They have all contribution to our cuisine, and that's what makes it unique. That's what makes it exotic, and I think it's quite delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Sharef Kaya is Australia's top Turkish chef presiding over the kitchens of the acclaimed Ottoman restaurant in Canberra. When we think about also Turkish cuisine, there's a two key element. Yogurt, predominantly used. I mean, this is, you can't think Turkish cuisine without yogurt. And also butter. Butter is um, one of the main staple of the diet as well. This is biber salçası, espos tomato paste made from peppers, red peppers and you can make a hot and a milder one. Mm. You can use in salads and use them in the cooking. It's very popular in the southern part of Turkey. They use that quite a lot in the meat dishes. And when they're marinating some of the dishes, they use also this paste. And tomato paste seems to be one of the really popular... I think, it's, I mean, the tomatoes, I think, since uh, from 18th century, become a key ingredient in mm. Turkish cooking. Bulgur is, uh, is a predominantly used right through Anatolia every day. In, in every household. They make it pilaf, mm. they make it salad. This is um, one of the main staple of the diet in mm. Turkey today. What we have here is uh, nar ekşili, means pomegranate molasses. It's been one of the cherished products in our cuisine because it's got this sort of a savory, sort of a semi-sweet and sour taste. Mm. And this is, this is my friend. <laughs> Spice is, is absolutely essential. Sumac grows like a berry. Yeah. I always refer to sumac as like a substitute for lemon. It's got that tangy, lemony flavor, which you can use in the salads, you're marinating meat, you can use it in a very versatile product. This is also is uh, what we call derme biber. So these this are is dried chili? Semi-dried and crush it. And when you're buying, always look for the oily one. This mm. is a good one because it's uh, It'll have a good flavors. And this is fantastic to use, again, for the meat dishes mm. or for uh, f even for salads. So it gives you a, a chilli warmth, but not too hot? Not, not too hot. This is the beauty about it. And uh, what about the nigella seeds? Often some people call this a, a black cumin. We call this is um, çörek otu. You can make a mixture of the uh, sesame seeds. This is be used on the pide. Mm. It gives you sort of a nice aroma on the bread. In Turkey, uh, tea is one of the most consumed products. Mm. And it is almost, for some household, for, in fact, for everybody, it's a religious thing. Mm. When you get up in the morning, first thing you think about tea. Uh, yeah, Ishul Ityar works in the glossy world of fashion, but when she comes home, she often whips up traditional Turkish food for a fast mm. dinner. Tell me how salads sort of fit into Turkish cuisine. Well, salads are usually either a bit of an entree or they're an accompaniment to like meats, fishes, or it's with um, your Turkish breads. It's mm. like a dip, you know, or an entree. This is Turkish olive oil. So you put one of those into your hot pan, two small onions in there, so we kind of... This is my favourite, it's hot pepper paste. Mm. One kind of 
big teaspoon of that in. Get that going in there. Three tomatoes. Oh. Put a bit of black pepper in there as well, just a pinch. And a bit of salt. So what we do then is you put two cups of um, washed bulgur into the tomatoes, onion and the paste. Stir that around. Just to get them all coated all. So two, two cups of bulgur, you use four cups of stock. I use chicken stock. It'll come to the boil. Mm -hmm. Put the lid on. And then you turn it right down. And that'll just all absorb the stock. About 15, 20 minutes. That's so easy. Yeah. Oh. So just give it a quick, just give it a bit of a stir. It's really yummy. Wow. Can't wait to try this. <laughs> I love a good carbohydrate. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good one as well. Wow. A bit hot though. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Yum. Mm. It's yummy. Bread features in every meal, whether it's holding kebabs or scooping eggs or dips. We've all come to love the large paddle-shaped bread called pide with its dusting of sesame and nigella seeds. What you may not know is that this is the bread of Ramadan in Turkey, generally only available for a month. In Australia, it's baked year-round and it's our largest growing variety of bread. If you love the bread, try it stuffed with cheese and spinach or spicy sujuk sausage. Have you ever tried golden flaky burek with its creamy cheese and spinach filling? Made at home, the pastry stretched to the size of a large tablecloth. The result is layers of the lightest, crunchiest pastry in the world. And then there's the famous dips of many colours, all using a variety of vegetables. We normally have the dips with our meat meals. Um, they're nice and colourful, so mm. um, it has to satisfy our eyes as well. So, and it's creamy. So you'd never have a barbecue without making, what, how many dips to start? Oh, at least four or five. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Wow. <laughs> so we're pretty much full with our dips. <laughs> so Makeup not... artist and painter Esma Kuralor is the dip maker in her family and has it down to a fine art. What I do, I put the yoghurt in, garlic, a pinch of salt. We just mix them all together, make it nice and creamy. Just for a small bowl, you probably need um, six or seven carrots. Mm -hmm. Now we fry them. Mm -hmm. We don't want the carrots to be too soft. Uh, we just want to get rid of the hardness. So not too much of oil. Mum puts probably twice as much as oil I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I quite like the taste with less oil. Yeah. And then we mix the garlic yogurt mix into it. Wow. So easy. It is very easy. That's why I love doing it. <laughs> Decorate it with olives. 
finish it off, olive oil on top. I've boiled the beetroots first and then I've baked them. After doing that, we just peel the beetroot. What a wonderful colour. Isn't it great? Yes. And the taste is beautiful. Mm. Now we can mix the yoghurt. Just mix it into the beetroot. That is amazing, isn't it? Yes. And just sprinkle some olive oil. Yum. For a Turkish person to have a smell of the meat cooking over charcoal, what happens? Oh. <laughs> Delicious. I love it. <laughs> this is the chicken. We mayonnaise it with the olive oil. We put some milk and salt. Milk? Some milk, yeah. Why milk? What? Because it makes softer. This is the Adana kebab. And what's the Adana kebab made from? Adana kebab is coming from the shoulder mint. Mm. And also we put the red capsicum inside, which chops them up by knife. That looks so fantastic. Oh. Yeah. What makes it so close to Turkish people's hearts? <sighs> smell. Mm. You see now, I cook one. Yeah. Smell makes me hungry. Oh. Look. <laughs> Time to eat. <laughs> <laughs> this is iron we make from the yogurt. We just put some little bit of salt in it. That's mm. it. And you always this have iron with kebabs? With the kebabs, yes. But a lot of people, they use it Shalgam, we call, which is coming from the turnips. That charcoal tastes divine. And what's the toast in uh, uh, Turkey? Sherefe. Sherefe. Mm. I think we have something in common with Aussies and Turks. Yeah. We love grill. Yeah. Or we love barbie. Yeah. So I say, why not I put a kofta on a barbie? <laughs> yeah, why not put a kofta <laughs> on, on a barbie? barbie. So yeah. Anyone can do it. Basically use a freshly minced lamb. You, you need to get like a medium fat. It should be nice and juicy. We'll start mm -hmm. with the just gr simply grating with our onions. Okay, I'll do that just like that. Pinch of allspice like this. And we got some pepper, chilies. I like the chilies. Then we put just a small garlic like that. Okay, and we put some salt and some uh, some paprika. If you, want. you got sweet paprika and the cumin. The more we do, we just break the egg. Then we're gonna mix it. So first, you just a rough mix. Mm -hmm. The more we do. Keep mixing like this. You see? So you wet your hands? Wet your hands. Just what we do, just go like that. See your hands. This hand goes like this. Ah, okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Then you just bring it in if you need to. Uh -huh. And with your fingers on top. Then just uh, with the two fingers, you go like that. You, you see? Okay, that's Beautiful. our uh, kofta is ready. We just put a little bit, just tad olive oil into the pan. Kofta on the grill, on the barbie. Maybe a minute on each side, minute that's or it? bit more, yeah, and should should do. So you turn the both sides and just you think it's it's ready. It's you think it's cooked. You can often touch it if it's bouncy. It's, that's a good sign of coffee as well. Mm. Yum. <laughs> Very yummy. Come on. Mmm. That really is exquisite. Mm. It, I don't know how you got it so juicy. 
while, as I said, it's just a... Years of practice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Turkish food is made for vegetarians with its unusual colourful salads and its beautiful inventive vegetable dishes. Bill Pektuzan's parents started making Turkish delight when they arrived in Australia in the 1970s. Because of their long hours, Bill is the eldest of three often cooked for the family. One of the favourites was dolma or stuffed vegetables. So, you can have a scoop. Ah, the fine use of a melon baller. Just leave them a quarter of an inch um, outside. So you've got to leave enough flesh to hold it together? Yeah, hold it together. Oh. Here we are. Oh, that's very good. OK, get the capsicum. We cut it uh, there. So it's going to stay like the lid. All right? Wow. So we get the inside out. Tomato. Ah. We're just going to cut this and then we're going to scoop out with a um, spoon. And uh, nice and big. What's your next trick? We'll do the uh, zucchinis. Beautiful. Just chop it um, around here ah. in the middle. And we'll still do the scoop uh, out inside. Very creative with vegetables. Yeah, you can do lots of things. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty perfect. OK, we add the um, olive oil. Then we just put the onions, a bit of salt, and we'll put the pine nuts. And let's sauté this. Medium grain rice is washed. There we are, we just keep stirring this now. Diced tomato. Just gonna add currants, mm -hmm. a bit of a chili. You like chili? Yeah, great. Yep. Pinch of salt. Add some pepper. Just enough to cover the rice. Bill then adds a mix of chopped dill, mint and parsley. Simmer it about maybe 10 minutes. You haven't cooked the rice right through. It's sort not, of not, al dente. Yeah. It's still got a little bite to it, doesn't bite it? Bite to it, yes. Yeah. A little bit of capsicum. Gee, that's easy. That's an easy one. Oh. It's more colourful now. Pour some olive oil. They just have warm water. Mm -hmm. Speed up cooking. Maybe uh, about an inch. Yeah. Yeah. About 20 minutes. Yeah. Look at this. Oh. That is beautiful. beautiful isn't it? That is lovely. No doubt about it, what the Turks do with sugar is amazing. This is the biggest manufacturer of authentic Turkish delight in the Southern Hemisphere, and the way they make this beautiful stuff is unique. Turkish delight dates back about 500 years, back to the Ottoman Empire era. Uh, it was made for the, uh, the sultans by the chefs. The main ingredients are sugar, wheat starch, glucose and water. Cooking over four hours, and they're the only ingredients that can be used in true, authentic Turkish delight.
when it comes to sweets, there are also cakes. Gulba Hakaya says she's never met a sweet she didn't like, and her specialty is a simple semolina syrup cake made with just six ingredients. I've got to separate the egg white from the egg yolk. I'm going to beat the egg whites first. Just a pinch of sugar. So that won't take long. There we are. That's about it. So you could do this in, what, 10 minutes or so? Oh, yeah, just rip 10 it up. minutes, yeah. Now I'm just going to put the egg yolks in with the tablespoon of sugar. Oh, okay. It's just to get the yeah. egg yolks, you know, okay. blending nicely. And I'm going to put a little bit of orange zest in there. Oh, actually. nice. So that, that, that's about ready now because I just wanted to aerate them and mm. they've, got, they've got enough there. Into that, everything basically goes into it. A semolina, you know, plain flour. Mm -hmm. And a pistachio. I partly mixed it, I don't want to break it up too much. And then I just put the egg yolks in that too. Wow. Look at that colour. That is just divine. Isn't that wonderful? So that's ready to go into the containers that we've already sprayed with um, some oil. So that's half an hour at 180 degrees Celsius. Okay. And then in the meantime, what do you in do? In the meantime, I make the syrup. So I put 600 mils of orange juice. I like fresh orange juice. And put a bit of zest of an orange. Beautiful. Nice, yummy. Yeah. And then the sugar. Mm -hmm. Now that, that's a kilo, so I just put mm. half of that. I make sure the sugar's melted properly and mm. it, it becomes viscous. Mm. Probably 10 minutes. Mm. Yeah. And then I let it cool down a bit. So there's my cream. <laughs> And we just whisk it till it's lovely and light. And... Yeah, just till it holds its shape. There we are. We don't want to over whip it. Isn't that lovely? Beautiful. And I'm going to mix yogurt into that one ah. to make it lighter. Yogurt and orange also. Beautiful. There's, there's, a, yeah. there's an affinity there, and I love that too. So I just pour onto my cake. Ooh, look at them. They've... They, Jumping with delight. They love it. And I want to get it on top as well because it gives it that lovely glossy shine, doesn't oh, it? Oh, wow. The sugar and the orange. I love the way they bob up. Okay, so there it is. That's been in the syrup for 10 minutes now. Mm. You can leave it longer if you want it a bit softer. Oh, yum. And I just put a little bit more of the syrup with it. And then we've got our cream and yogurt mixture. Mm -hmm. We just put a big dollop there. And the orange segments that we've done also. Yogurt's Turkish. I love that. Oranges are Turkish. Mm. Pistachios. You're semolina. Turkish. I'm Turkish. I've, I've got the Turkish uh, sweet tooth, so. Here we go. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. Oh, oh, yum. Look at that. Just, there we are. It's there hard we to do, isn't it? <laughs> See? There you go. <laughs> mm. Mm. That is amazing. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. It's unbelievable. Mm. On our next safari, the fire and passion of Spanish food, the cuisine that makes your heart beat faster. Now we can stuff up anything. Stuff up anything? Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to have dinner tonight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now. Shall we eat the rest? Yeah. <laughs> Take two. Mm. <laughs>